right, so welcome everybody. Before we get officially started this evening, I'd like to acknowledge that Vocali is broadcasting to you all this evening from the unceded ancestral and traditional territories of the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh peoples. And of course, we are all joining through the amazing magical powers of Zoom this evening. And so, you know, it, it's fair for us all to take a moment to acknowledge the lands that we are all settled on. For me, I feel like like it's an honor and a privilege to live to work in the play on these lands. Um, so officially welcome to everybody. It's 2021. In fact, it's January 20th, 2021. It's a brand new year, the first um, uh, virtual vocal eye number 29. Um, and the first one of, of 2021 for us. And tonight we're going to experience time lapse, which is a posthumous conversation. And this is going to be sort of a virtual slideshow, and I'll get into some of that in a minute. Um, my name's Amy Amanti. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Vocal Eye. My pronouns are she, hers. And of course, I will be hosting you this evening as I do every Wednesday evening. Uh, and again, I just want to take a quick moment to thank our donors. Vocal Eye offers this programming free of charge, but uh, we acknowledge all of our donors and appreciate any contributions that are made and that get made. And if you would love to make a contribution, we'd love to receive one. And Donna's going to post a link in the chat so it's easy for you to find. And I guess just another thing I like to remind people is that our, our programming varies so much from week to week. And so you might find something one week that's not your gig and something the next week that's absolutely up your alley. So um, keep checking our newsletters. We've got a new hotline, um, our uh, website for the upcoming programs. And of course, I'll let you know what's coming up next week at the end of this week. And feel free to invite your friends. Everybody's welcome to participate in these things. All you need to do is email events at vocali.ca and register with your name, your location, and uh, how you identify in terms of being a member of the blind community or a sighted supporter. And we'd be happy to have you. Okay, gosh, let's get on with tonight's event. So Vocalize paying tribute tonight to the memory and legacy of disability arts pioneer, Jeff McMurchie, who in this virtual tour um, and, and retrospective is, uh, well, this, this tour right now is, is happening at some gallery and we're going to unpack that in just a bit. Um, in fact, Vocali is one of the many legacy projects that have come out of uh, Jeff McMurchie's founding of Kickstart Disability Arts and Culture. Um, and so, you know, Jeff has been a, a proud member of uh, the Vancouver community, the LGBTQ plus community, and an artist that identifies with disability. Um, and we're now looking at his art as he's passed away in 2015. So we're gonna get into this all in detail this evening with our three special guests that we have with us tonight. So we've got, three people who were uh, instrumental in curating this particular arts installation. So we've got Yuri Arais, we've got Persimmon Blackbridge, and we've got S.D. Holman with us. So welcome to the three of you. Hello. Hello. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, I, I'm so excited to have you all here this evening. Um, you know, we've put together this slideshow with the help of, of Yuri and um, taken sort of a snippet of some of these pieces um that Jeff has created and before we get into the slideshow SD I'm hoping I can call on you um as a representative of some gallery to talk about this exhibition that's happening in person right now at some gallery um sure thanks thank you so much Amy and first of all I want to thank you um Vocal Eye for doing this um I've never been a part of something like this and I'm um just uh, very impressed with this and very pleased that um through our connection with Jeff McMurchie that, that, that this happened. Um, so um, there a little tiny bit about some gallery, I think you guys had asked me to do. So we're here some gallery, we produce and present um, and exhibit uh, visual uh, art uh, favoring challenging thought provoking multidisciplinary work that pushes boundaries and initiates dialogue. We began as Pride in Art, founded by two-spirit artist and activist, Robbie Hong in 1998. In 2008, Pride in Art mounted its first queer arts festival. And in 2018, it's actually our third year anniversary um, this month, no, next month. Um, some opened this, this space here, opened as a permanent space presenting year round multidisciplinary exhibits and events that further the artistic vision of the Queer Arts Festival. Um, and today um, I'm here, I'm um, S.D. Holman. I'm also known as Shara or Sid. So I'm saying that because various people know me as various things. 
Um, and you, you may hear Yuri or Persimmon call me that. I am the artistic director of Pride and Art Society. And um, uh, thank you for joining us for Time Lapse, Posthumous Conversations. Um, time Lapse is a memorial exhibition of visual artist uh, Jeff McMurchy, who is a storm force fag who blew open disability art in Canada and whose legacy includes a generation of disabled artists who thrived under his mentorship. Um, this, we, we brought this together. Um, he died in uh, 2015 and it's been several years in the making. And um, <clears throat> it, was, it was supposed to be at another gallery and it, it didn't happen. And um, Prasim and I, who are very good friends, kept talking about it and when when some happened, I said, well, you know, I have a gallery now and I think this is an important um, important work, so we should make it happen. And Yuri was a perfect um, person to bring in, uh, the then uh, director, uh, artistic director at uh, Kickstart. So we, we partnered with Kickstart Disability Arts and Culture and the All Souls at uh, Mountain View Cemetery to make this happen. We had uh, two weeks uh, a week in Hornby of a curatory residency. I went to Hornby um, to to work with Persimmon on um, the the work, and then Yuri and I spent a couple of weeks here in the gallery putting it all together. So uh, Jeff McMurchy is recognized as a pioneer. Um, he was an accomplished visual artist, dancer, and inspiring arts administrator. After an accident in 1977 left him paralyzed, he became dead to changing the lives of disabled artists and challenging attitudes toward disability art as a founding artistic director of Kickstart Disability Arts and Culture. McMurchie's dream was that disability art be considered on the same level as all art. He said, my, art, my interest is that the art, art that is presented should not be through the filter of disability. I would like to be appreciated as art I'd like it to be appreciated as art and you don't have to like it. Mm, I love that. And thank you. Um, I could read the curatorial statement. It's about a page. I don't know if you'd like that or not. I think maybe what we'll do, SD, is we'll we'll hear from, from Yuri and Persimmon and we'll just dive into the mm. slideshow. And, and if pieces great. of that come up, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, Perfect. what we can do is uh, send a link out in our post email. So if, if, if our uh, Vocali members want to read through that, they have that right at their fingertips. Absolutely. And it's also on the website. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I see we have a hand up from Anthony. So Anthony, I'm just going to call on you quickly to make sure you're not having any tech issues. Okay. Uh, not hearing from Anthony. So that's okay. Um, we'll lower your hand for you. I'll assume it's a, a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake. I was okay. No worries, Anthony. Sorry Thanks. Yeah. Um, so we've got Yuri with us, we've got Persimmon with us, um, and as SD just mentioned, um, you know, Jeff McMurchie was the founder of Kickstart Disability Arts and Culture, which of course um, was, uh, um, I guess, the, the, kick, the, the jumping off point for Vocal Eye. And so without Kickstart coming first, Vocal Eye would not be here this evening to be able to share with you his works. And so that's one of the reasons why we also thought it was very important to share with our community. Um, maybe Yuri, uh, I'll start with you and then I'll go to Persimmon. Yuri, tell us how you're connected with, with Jeff and or Kickstart. Okay, so and on my, you, sorry, an unmute question just showed up and I tackled it, sorry. <laughs> um, hi everybody, thanks for joining us this evening. It's a real pleasure to be here um, as one of the three curators for the Jeff McMurchie exhibition. Uh, it was a really, I'm just gonna say a couple of things first. It was a real privilege to be able to dive into an artist's work over a period of time and, you know, spends a, a serious amount of time with other curators to create a body of work that, uh, to present a body of work that was interesting, that touched on a lot of parts of Jeff's life, um, creatively speaking, uh, as well as we felt it was really important to give this work uh, a platform that it deserves. Jeff was 
uh, an incredible multi-talented artist in many different ways. Uh, and in the exhibition, we primarily show, well, we, we exclusively show uh, his visual artwork. Um, a, Jeff was a dancer, a photographer, a advocate, um, and just an all around disability, you know, kick-ass dude. He just was really, he was one of those kind of people that really was there to make things happen. Um, so we should jump, you asked me to jump into the slides, Amy, didn't you? No, I didn't. I just asked you what your connection was to Jeff. That's all. Oh, okay. So really, sorry. Okay. So my connection to Jeff, um, I, in the first um, Kickstart Festival, Kickstart was originally called the S4DAC, Society for Disability Arts and Culture. Um, they developed a festival. The first festival happened in 2001. It was a first uh, multi-disability art and culture festival of its kind in Canada. And um, they brought together uh, people from all across the world, really, for this festival. And I worked at a place in Minneapolis, Minnesota, at the time, running a gallery and a studio program for artists who identify with disabilities. And Jeff invited us to come up. Um, he invited me personally to come up to talk about artists, to give talks. And then our performing arts program came up and did a series of performances um, at it. And that festival was called Kickstart. And mm -hmm. the festivals um, preceding that were called um, Kickstart and then Kickstart changed their name to Kickstart. So that's a little, just a brief odd little history on how the name came about. Um, but I worked, uh, I came to the festival in 2001, the first Kickstart festival gave presentations and, um, and then a bunch of years later, I ended up being the artistic director at Kickstart and um, which was quite, um, quite an, a big seat to fill. There's been a lot of artistic directors over the history, but um, I, I felt really excited and privileged to be um, in that position. And so most of my interaction, I can honestly say with Jeff was professional. Uh, we worked together. We, um, you know, we just, he, he was, even though he wasn't involved in Kickstart anymore, Jeff was always involved in Kickstart and helping advance disability art and culture. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. So in a nutshell, that's my connection to Jeff and this party. Persimmon, how about yourself? What's your connection to Jeff? Well, I kind of knew Jeff around the, um, the queer community for, <laughs> years and then um then when he got involved with kickstart um i started doing different things with kickstart too i'm an artist with a disability i have a learning disability and a psych diagnosis and kidney failure um so i've always done art that is kind of disability focused or deals with disability since, you know, the seventies, cause I'm so old, hmm. but um, Jeff and I, like we, we did art together um, sometimes. He was a big collaborator and sometimes he would work with people where um, Basically, he had an idea for something and someone else would put it together under his direction and he'd be really specific. Okay, this branch goes here, put that in there. This one goes here because he was quadriplegic. He had some use of one hand, um, but he couldn't do big carpentry, but he could definitely like guide someone else to do big carpentry and so things like the griffin that we'll see um were made like that so i did that with him a couple of times and we also did some things where we would have an idea together and we would just kind of pass it back and forth and he would work on it i would work on it and um 
and it would be something we did together because we really share an aesthetic. We really share a way of working with materials. And so because of that, like, he was really important in my life as, as an artist. And so when we were doing this show, um, one of the ways that I worked on the show was um, a bunch of his stuff that was um, broken or unfinished or not really started um, got brought to my house and there were sculptures that I mended where it was just clear, okay, this bicycle wheel is trash, find a new bicycle wheel, remount it, remount everything else like that. But then there were other things where he would have like a box of items and they were supposed to go together in a collage and you could tell what the collage was about, but um, it wasn't assembled. So you didn't know like how, he, what his vision for putting all these weird different items together was. So so it sounds I, like you, you really honored <clears throat> the collaborative process. Yeah. Awesome. We're gonna we're gonna jump into the slides here, and folks, just so you have an uh, um, an idea of what the format is this evening, because it's a little different than usual. We have approximately twelve slides, and they're kind of put into little groups. And so I invite you, as um, we're describing the slides and talking about the slides, to please uh, use the raise your hand function if you if a question pops in, you need more information about description, um, or just want to ask a question, and we will systematically do it that way. So um, feel free, please, to use the raise your hand function throughout if you have questions. I'm going to get Rick to bring up slide one, which is uh, the, a cover photo on the Georgia Strait. Uh, magazine and uh, we're going to get Yuri to describe this for us when it comes up on our screen. Thanks Amy. Which will come up any second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're all patient. I, I'm, I'm here I'm just it's just slowly coming up. <laughs> no worries Rick we appreciate we appreciate everything that you do. Oh there we go. All right, here it is. So Yuri, uh, tell us what we're looking at here because uh, it's cluttered for me. It's a, it's a good slide to start with actually. This is the cover of the Georgia Strait that featured Jeff's obituary. Um, this on the cover is uh, a picture of Jeff in his, you can't see this, but he's sitting in his wheelchair and he is got on his arms two long pieces of car fenders, actually, automobile fenders that have been manipulated and turned into found object wings on the very ends of the long pieces of the, of the fender, a crow's feather has been stuck in the end of each one. And what they were used for was to represent wings in a dance performance that Jeff did. Um, and the reason I'm just, we started with this piece is because we have those wings in the exhibition. And this- Yeah, image, let's, let's we, get Rick to pull up that next photo so we can get kind of a close up of the wings. So this, we, we thought it would be a good way to start to put this image in context. And what you're seeing here are the two wings. I'm kind of air bracketing the term wings. And I believe the title of this piece as it's installed is called Hang Up Your Wings. And they are installed by being hung on one, basically a nail that holds both of them and they are hanging down. So there's a circle at the top where Jeff's arms would have gone through and then the wings hang down in this picture with the feathers facing down. I would say each one of these is approximately four feet long. Mm. Um, and it's kind of a beautiful image to start with because, you know, flight 
is something that happens a lot in Jeff's work, the concept of motion and flight and taking off um, and having these pieces, these still pieces that are all about motion. Um, it's kind of somber. Um, and um, it is a beginning example of how Jeff incorporated found objects in a really elegant way in his There's work. There's this really interesting um, kind of juxtaposition that I'm noticing in the, the, the like the, I, I'm guessing it's metal, like it could be plastic, the fender pieces. But when I think about a car piece, I think about metal, but it looks chrome colored to me. Um, and then this, like this beautiful gentle texture of these lee are these uh, feathers. Um, so like there are two kinds of textures that you don't find together, which works really well. It's very fascinating to look at. And that's something that Jeff did really well. Um, the color, of, they are made out of metal. The color of them is primarily silver or stainless um, with a lot of black in certain areas. Mm -hmm. um, they, Jeff has, and we'll, we'll discuss this further as we go on, but his ability to to take objects, real found junky junk objects, not just like the beautiful junk objects that as artists we all get into. Mm -hmm. He would take some real, he had the ability to take real junk and elevate it to a place that, that made it something completely new. And, and you'll see more examples of this as we go on, but this is a perfect example of that. I'll invite SD or Persimmon if you want to share any thoughts about this particular piece, if you know how it was assembled or have a story around it. It's beautiful to watch the video where he uses them because um, he was an incredible dancer and um, very graceful in his wheelchair and the wings just kind of made his reach go out so far. Very nice. And I'll follow that up by saying in the installation um, of this exhibition, before you stepped into the gallery, there was a, there's a monitor outside that plays the, this entire performance. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so Very you cool. can experience that somewhat before entering the gallery. That was a way for us to incorporate his actual dance work in, mm -hmm. in you, know, you know, having him move in this exhibition. Awesome. I guess we'll, we'll get Rick to bring up the next piece, which is Evidence of a Garden. That's the title of this piece. Now, Yuri, you're going to have to unpack this for us big time. <laughs> what are we looking at? So we physically, I can say that we are looking at a collection of plastic flower tags. When you purchase uh, plants to, to put in the ground, they come with a plastic tag that describes them. Mm -hmm. We're also, I'm going to describe what the elements are and then I'll describe how they're put together. Um, I'm going to say there's hundreds of these plastic flower tags. There is a triangular shaped table with a green top and three wooden legs that is actually the shape of where some of Jeff's ashes are buried, where he used to live. And on the top of this green surface, the tabletop, if you will, there's been a lot of holes put in where those flower tags are sitting through. And they also have copper wire on the bottom, all of these tags to represent roots. And so put together, we have a table resting against a wall that has all of these flower, a bunch of flower tags with copper roots sticking through and you can see them coming through the bottom of the table as well. And then on the wall, there's an oblong shape which has hundreds of flower tags put up on the wall very randomly. And it somewhat looks like rain behind a garden in a certain sense. Hmm. I like the metaphor that you've shared. How, how large? So, okay. So here, here are my questions. First of all, um, because, and we'll, we'll, we'll further talk about this as we go on, but all of these pieces are available for sale. So is this piece on a wall in some gallery or is this piece on its own wall that 
gets hung on a, on a larger wall. Do you, does, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And one of the interesting things, I will say, just to answer your question first, this is installed on the wall at some gallery. Right. And similar to some of the other pieces that were in here, we were trying to, you know, there was no instructions on how this piece was to be installed. And we each had opportunities, particularly Sharon and I in the installation process of diving into a piece. This is one of the pieces that I dove into, if you will. And, um, you know, spent a day trying to figure out what the hell to do with these hundreds of flower tags with this table and, you know, trying to just, you know, in all the work, we were trying to present the work in the best way that we could for people to experience the best way. We had different shapes, things, metaphoring in the gallery. You know, we had these tall things, things that somehow became these tall things. And this is one of them. Visually speaking, the flower tags on the wall are approximately 10 feet tall in them. Mm -hmm. uh, the table in front of it is about three feet wide. In, in the physical unpacking of this piece, there was the table and there was the flower tags. And so I just played with them a lot, you know, and Cheryl will talk about playing with this stuff. And it's the key thing, the term that kept coming up in, in all of us trying to work to present this work, we all had to make it Jeffly. And Jeff has an aesthetic that becomes obvious to you as you're working with the work and you're spending a lot of time with it. And something Jeff Lee, I think is, you know, each one of us will say something different, but I'm gonna say right now, it's slightly awkward, it's slightly off and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. like that's Jeff Lee and you can feel it. It's perfect you know? in its imperfection. Completely. And, yeah. and that is something that comes across in, in all of the work, I, I, I believe. I'm curious, um, now that you've shared what Jeff Lee means to you, uh, Persimmon, what does Jeff Lee mean to you? Um, God, I don't know. It's, it's kind of giant and I don't really have <laughs> words for it. Yeah. I think I, you know, I, I, having myself having had the opportunity to go through these slides before uh, presenting them this evening, um, visually you can start to see kind of a pattern um, in that, um, I don't know, a lot of things feel to me to be like a collection of small found objects that create something larger than life almost. Mm -hmm. And from the simplest, I mean, you know, Yuri, I would never have guessed that these were flower tags. Mm -hmm. um, Cause to me, they just look like little tiny dots on a wall. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I know that they're flower tags, I get the, the sense of the texture cause I've purchased potted plants before mm -hmm. the sense of that texture, the sense of the fact that there's usually um, a, a print of what the flower is going to look like or the plant on one side. And, you know, the instructions for watering or feeding or sunlight on the, on the other side the names of the flowers, all those kinds of things. And so I can just imagine all the different variety. Um, and to me, it's very much like, I don't know, symbolic of life, of growth, of uh, prosperity. SD, what do you think about this piece? And what, and what does Jeff Lee mean to you? Did we lose SD? I believe she's muted. Oh, maybe she's muted. Still, I did. I unmuted myself and then it seemed to mute again. You're back. There we go. I'm back. Hi. Uh, I think I think Yuri said it perfectly. I'm not sure that I can, you know, add more. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Yuri talks about how working with the work, um, the 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 shapes come. It come to you that really like how he was how Jeff was thinking the different ways that he's choosing colors and shapes and things that are shapes that don't seem like they should belong together but 
belong together perfectly. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a feeling more than you just know when it's, uh, you know, Jeff when it's Lee. right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. May Another thing time? about this piece is, um, he collected all of those plant tags. They were all plants that he put in his garden in Victoria over the years. So it has this thing where, you know, he lovingly saved every plant tag that he ever had. Um, and this is what came of it. Very nice, Brissim. And Yuri, I hear, I heard you chime in in there. I'm sorry, the only, I just wanted to say one of the things that, as I, I mean, I haven't looked at this work in a few weeks, but seeing this again, one thing I really remember is that the shape of a flower tag always has that point on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And these things are all pointing down. It's just, it just adds to it for me. I just had a need to say that. I appreciate that. Yeah, kind of like they're, like they're all headed towards the ground to be planted or they've all, all sprouted out of the out of the bottom of the it's all about the earth wall. there it's all about yeah. that connection love that i mean um, i see i see them as sort as actually taking off more like rockets <laughs> yeah like you could even you could even imagine them out of the ground right yeah. that they were once they were once you know in the ground is this you know this thing and then they took flight you yeah. know they took flight like like jeff which brings back to when we talk about his work the hanging up my wings right which is so evocative yeah. of that and so much of that you talk really beautifully about the how how everything he did really speaks to his um queer and disability and and, and that speaks to that the wings speak to that so so much mm -hmm. of those the, the way he worked in his whole aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the image that I almost get from this, again, th that sort of conjures in my mind is um, this image that I saw once of uh, paper lanterns being flipped, like being let off into the sky at night mm. and they glow, but they're so sporadic in their nature. They just pepper the sky. And I get this sense, I get this kind of feeling about this that things are placed they're they feel like they're placed very randomly but somehow they come together even though mm -hmm. you know they you know it's they're meant to come together but you know that some you know, nobody took the time to just measure them out and put them it's it's they're randomly placed there but they all they all perfectly connect with each other if i may add to that yeah so we're, we're continuing to talk about this piece one of the beautiful things about having two weeks to put a show together what Sharon and I did in the gallery is this, and again, this is a piece that I dove into. I can tell you that those flower tags were arranged in a number of ways on the floor before they ever hit that wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like planning precision ways of hanging them, trying to figure out what the concept of random means, how outer shapes look on that thing. Like, and that again was as a real luxury from a curatorial point of view it was a gift to have the time that we did well what it does is it it it's it's thought provoking for the person who's looking at it because you look at it wondering if okay are all the perennials grouped together or you know like <laughs> what's the pattern here so I, I i i love that you're sharing that yuri but i guess my bigger question is is again because all of the pieces that are in this exhibition are for sale so if i were to purchase this how do I assemble it in my own house? You know, there's in a no Jeffrey manner. In a Jeffrey manner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's the answer to that question. Exactly. Because so each house, each house will have a different, probably Jeffrey manner. Yeah. And you know, you say he didn't measure it, but I would like to say uh, Yuri spent all day on this. Like, oh, I can imagine. We're talking yeah. like at least eight hours. Yeah. And so there's a, about visual art specifically too, there's a specific way that it kind of looks random in a way, but it's not random. So you're, you're I mean, you're going to ask whoever purchased this piece to be sort of an artist and tap into their own Jeff Lee. And we would give them a picture. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I just, you know, I, here's, here's what I'm thinking. If it was in my house, it would end up in a box, just like you found it. <laughs> but Amy, that's part of what it is. If the person who purchased this piece, they will receive all of that in a box. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and we would share with them how it's installed in this exhibition. But the truth is, we don't know how Jeff's original intention of this piece was. And that's part of this whole concept of reimagining, you know, and revisiting this work and having it transition into something else in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Very and cool. And being in a box might just be the Jeff Lee way it should be in your house, Amy. Yeah. It's good to know because I would feel like I'm doing disservice to the piece. But then again, that's how the piece was found in Jeff's home, right? So, um, yeah. all right, let's take a look at Ancestors, which is the next piece. Mm. This is um, all you, Shara. <laughs> you want to um, take a crack? At... No, for... it's not. It's not all me. It's all persimmon. Yeah. I just well, spend hours with those little things on the wall. So I need, I need a description. So Yuri, can I call on you to describe yeah, I this? Can, I can continue to do description. Yeah. Um, now, this is one of the more ornate pieces in the exhibition. It is installed directly on the wall, and it is a collection of uh, glass flowers, metal boxes, eggs, bones, broken dishes, plastic skeletons, glass balls with letters, all kinds of stuff. What it literally, how it is literally assembled on the wall, I'm going to guess that the installation is approximately six feet in height and four feet wide. Hmm. So there's kind of a central piece to this, which is a box, which has a picture of Jeff's mom and dad in it and butterflies all in the back. And above that box, this is a very complicated piece to describe. Um, on that box, there's so many objects. On the right and the left, nailed to the top surface of the box is a piece of a bone, which makes it kind of look like a wing possibly on each side or an arm of some kind. On the bottom of the box, there's three plastic skeletons randomly nailed to the box that are not random. There's a fan, uh, the kind of fan that you would um, hold and wave in front of your face to mm -hmm. make air move. It looks lace. The top of the box, there is a, a plate, a very ornate plate with some, I don't know what you call the detailing around it, but it's, uh, it's very ornate at the end. It's the size of a saucer, which has two bones screwed to the sides, right and left of it, that again, represent wings in a certain way. So that's the central object. To the bottom right and left, there is a metal box hanging on the wall. The box on the right looks like an egg tray, but it's, it's a metal tray. And in that tray, there's a series of porcelain balls that have different letters on them. There are enough letters in there to spell Jeff's name, not his last name, but Jeff, you can spell in there with I think one or two extras. Hmm. On the left-hand side of the main central box that I described, is a wire metal box hanging on the wall. In that box, there is, um, I believe it was feathers was the base, um, or it was cotton maybe, but they're full of different colored eggs, some broken and some not. So you have a central object, you have a bottom right and left kind of metal box hanging on the wall that has a handle to each one, and that's what's holding it on the wall. And in a I guess I would refer to the shape of everything around it as like a leaf shape. I wouldn't call it a teardrop. Yeah. But there is a series of glass leaves that are about an inch big that create this form or that bring all of these objects together. And at the very top, there's three larger glass objects that are shaped as a circle which are some kind of household or light fixture thing, kind of an industrial looking thing. And all of this on this particular wall has been painted yellow. 
Uh, Shara, do you know the name of the color yellow? Jeff Lee. It's a Jeff Lee <laughs> yellow color on the back. It's a very warm Jeff Lee color. Um, and yeah, that's kind what... of a, I don't know if I pick up like a little bit of a, like a summer mustard. I don't know. I'm making that up, but yeah, that sounds, that sounds, it's a warm, dark. Yeah. It's, it's pretty yellow. warm. It's not like a fluorescent highlighter yellow. Mm -mm. It's um, very warm. And yeah. the color of that wall was based on, um, a, uh, uh, some wallpaper in one of Jeff's rooms, this yellow, um, wallpaper with these roses all over it. And, um, we kind of came to a place of painting one of the four gallery walls this color um, and this back wall I'm going off in a different direction I'm sorry but I'll just say that this piece is a center piece on a wall that has other pieces to the side but this is the only wall that is painted this color everything else is right so I, I know persimmon's probably dying to say some stuff um, so I'm going to give her the opportunity to do that. But this reminds me again, just like the piece that we saw previously with the flower tags, that it's it's a collection again of randoms. Well, we're using the word random sort of with air quotes because uh, they would they would seem random to us out in the world if we came across them, but they're obviously assembled to make a point. Um, but again, if I were to purchase this, it would come in a box and I'd have to set it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. This has an instructional video with it. Ah! <laughs> but, not the, but not for the glass pieces, but I would love to hear Persimmon because I'm sure we missed some of the objects that were in it and I'd love to hear Persimmon's uh, more descriptive. Um, there's also the, the main box. It has a um, like a pink flowery wallpaper around the edges of the main box and in the um the back wall of the main box has um this he had these little cards that had pictures of butterflies on them and um it was all in a package with the box. The box already had the pink wallpaper on it, but all these different kinds of butterflies are at the very back. And then his mom and dad are in front of that. And then the fan and then the fish lures. And then on the, um, on the dish that's over the main box, there's a picture of Jeff and um, there's one of those butterfly pictures in half. So there's a wing coming out of each side of the picture of Jeff. So there's kind of like a continuing series of wings. Um, and Jeff had this thing in his house where he would, he would do things like put these round glass letter balls next to eggs because they look similar. And so that's that's one of the Jeffly things in this in this. But how it came to me was the box with the um, pink wallpaper already on it and then all these items unassembled so it was clear that it was really about his parents and so I just tried to reflect that in it putting it together but it was a lot of beautiful stuff how long did it take you to uh, to assemble this persimmon you had to guess oh several days because I had to try out different things and think what does he want with that with that fan and then go okay the fan it looks like a butterfly wing and the um the plate it kind of has that lacy thing like the fan is lacy and the bones 
they're kind of like butterfly wings and just looking at all all the relationships that I knew he was thinking about Mm -hmm. and go okay there's these plastic skeletons and they relate to the bones that relate to the fan that relates to the plate that relates to the industrial things so So what do you what do you think jeff is if you had to guess what what jeff is trying to convey with a piece like this what's he saying what's he what does he want us to feel well i think the major elements in that are the pictures of his parents and they're kind of halfway hid behind this lacy fan but they are really they're the major focal point and all this other stuff surrounds them. And um, they're both dead now. And so I think it was like, it was like a a memorial to his parents. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that actually. It does feel a bit with the symbolism of the butterflies and the bones, and it does feel like a little bit of a memorial. I appreciate that. Um, SD, any thoughts from yourself on this particular piece? It sounds like you were all sort of quite involved. Um, Yeah, we were. Uh, You know, Persimmon did the bulk of the work. And um, like you said, we had a video. Um, When I went there, she put it together And I videoed her putting it together and how everything was supposed to go in the wall. The the light fixtures at the top, they're actually quite large bolts bolted in. So like they're about five or six inches long and a half inch or three quarters of an inch deep um, into the wall with these glass fixtures. Mm -hmm. And I spent another, oh, I don't know, Yuri six hours because the thing that she didn't we didn't video or didn't I didn't get instruction on was the glass um the 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 beautiful glass um um, leaves um, which by the way are green orange and white and you'll find um, lots of those colors in his work so I just wanted to mention the the colors too the greens and the oranges lots in 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 um in in Jeff's work um, and I spent, <laughs> I spent probably way too much time putting this on the wall. Um, as much time, I think, as Yuri is putting the, uh, the, uh, the tags uh, on the wall. And uh, I would say, yeah, that was not random. Um, uh, that's all just, it's such a beautiful, beautiful piece. And this whole wall, the idea was that the, the yellow wallpaper was um, an altar area. It was about um, a good portion of a room in Jeff's house that was an altar area. Mm-hmm. And um, this whole wall was, was, that was the original idea that it would be, uh, you know, kind of an altar area. And so Ancestors is a beautiful, a beautiful name. And, you know, we, I, uh, Persimmon, I, you know, found, we found these things, Persimmon found these things and, Paula found these things whose whose house he lived in in these you know we some of the objects were completely put together and some were um you know partially put together but they were in these spaces and we knew that you know this all of these things belonged in a piece and uh just that um persimmon because also persimmon worked with jeff for many years um working with him knew you know she was the one who came up with Jeffly she worked on something that would until it was Jeffly enough and I think she uh, 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 worked um, she I mean not I think I know she worked with um, Jeff for many years w- working with him making art so mm-hmm. having that feeling uh, yeah that's that's all I really need to say I wish um, I wish you could come down to the gallery because we have you know we had um pieces that um for for folks that you'd be able to touch and feel um feel the work like the the balls that are in the the beautiful porcelain they're quite heavy balls that you can feel um uh, the beauty of them okay i think um let's move on to the next photo which is uh snakes Mm. again so um (laughs) 
You know, revisiting this work right now just reminds me how much care we all put into it. Oh, you can yeah. you can just hear it in your voices. Well, you know, we all, uh, you know, it was really interesting. I mean, we're we're three very different creative people, and but we all had, we just all loved our process. I just, mm -hmm. I th yeah, I, I just, I really enjoyed. So this piece. Um, without digressing, is a collection of snakes that Jeff had. And this was another one of those things. Okay, wait, wait a second. Wait, Sna like rubber snakes? Wooden okay. snakes? So um, all of the above. This okay. is a collection of snakes um, that are made out of wood. There's some that are rubber. There's some that are actual um shoelaces um you know those twisty twisty shoelaces that you just put together so you don't have to tie them there is some roots that look like a snake there are there's a little pillow that has a snake screen printed on it so it's a collection of snakes of various types what and because they were all together everything in that collection was referred to as a snake even mm -hmm. if it was a branch you know what i mean because you could tell that that was his intention because it was together. So, so much of Jeff's life is about collections. And, you know, we wanted to be able to show some of that as well. And so this is an interesting piece to discuss only because, you know, this is like a collaboration with the artist. You know, I installed this piece and Shara, what was the magic width number? Remember things were a certain amount wide? Shara's muted. Is there a chance that she could be unmuted? Sorry about that. I couldn't see that. Um, okay. 18, 18 inches. So, we worked with 18 yeah. and we worked with 13. And maybe just more of a description, like how tall it was and the colors and. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, yeah. so this thing was 18 inches wide, this collection, and it's about 10 feet tall. And it is um, literally all of these snakes, 18 inches wide going straight up in a very so-called random placement. Um, persimmon handled each one of these, put a little wire attachment on them so we could hang them on the wall. We knew after, you know, talking about it for a while that they were going to end up on a wall. We just didn't know how. And so this is kind of a collaboration with me as a curator with the artist's collection of stuff. And it was about making choices on how people could enjoy seeing this collection of things in the context of everything else, because the show is a combination of collections, artwork that are collections, you know, like it's this weird mm -hmm. kind of thing. So this, we've got green snakes, brown wood snakes, yellow painted. There's also a seed pod in there, like a foot and a half long seed pod. And it's a snake because it was in that collection of snakes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so they're handcrafted, they're found objects. It's an array of all of them. And I think there was 75 in the collection of snakes on the wall. And size-wise, there are things as small as, there's a rubber snake that's as small as like six inches long to things that are, there's one made out of bottle caps in the middle of it that is about three feet long. So it's a really interesting collection of, of these lines that are different colors and shapes that I will say are all going up the wall. Mm -hmm. I have to say that when I looked through the slideshow, this was one of my favorite pieces. And I'm not exactly sure what it is about this piece that, because I couldn't, I, I, I don't get the detail of the snakes, but it feels to me very organic. It almost feels to me like a root system. Mm. Um, the way it kind of travels up the wall um, and kind of in this entangled, again, I, we use the word random. It feels random, but you know that there is, there's more to it than that. Um, so there's something about this that really excites me. Again, I know that if I buy this and take this home, it's going to look very different on my wall than it does on, on the some gallery wall. Um, but again, that's, I'm learning that that's the beauty of 
of what Jeff's, what Jeff's work is or what Jeff's work could be. And I wonder if, I guess I wonder if, if Jeff had, had been able to see these pieces through, whether they would be on walls in his house, like they are in your gallery, or whether they would have been mounted on, on a board that could be transferred, you know, as his, as his, you know, as he created it to wherever it ended up. I'll take that. Please. Um, when he lived in Vancouver, he had his snake collection displayed. He had a um, a full size bed spring, um, just the metal springs in the frame um, hung from the ceiling of his living room. Um, and he had all of his snakes crawling in and out of the um of the bed springs hmm. and when he moved to victoria he gave away his bed springs and his um snakes went into a box gotcha and so i think that was that was the thing he had one iteration of that um of that sculpture with the bed springs. And now this is another one because we couldn't find those old fashioned bed springs to, yeah. to remake it. And we thought, well, he would have done something different in Victoria and mm -hmm. we're doing something different in the Sum Gallery. And I would like to add to that for me personally, it's it's a weird balance, this image we're looking at, because this is not a piece of Jeff's work per se. This is curators taking a selection of objects and deciding on how the public can see them. But at the same time, it's a piece, but it's not. Do you see? It's an interesting, it's about those conversations. That's, you know, in all of us interacting with these pieces. So it's like taking a person's wardrobe and creating a fashion show out of it. You know, you yeah. mix and match and you put layers together and it may not have been yeah. how the person wore them, yeah. but that's the show that you're creating or that's yeah. the conversation you're starting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I this, this piece really, uh, this collection really says something to me. Um, well, it is available for sale, so you know. <laughs> well, you never know. I just got to find myself a blank wall. Um, or a box. Or, or a box, or a box. <laughs> I can add it to my bead shelf. Um, okay, let's take a look at uh, the next photo, Rick, which um, is let called Letters. Oh, Shara, would you unfold that for us? No, you're doing the descriptions, Yuri. Oh, okay, that's right. I forgot. Descriptions. Sorry. We're not. I'll do the to... description, and then I'm going to ask Shara to talk about it because Shara spent a lot of time with this, um, and this is similar to the snake discussion. When we, so I'm going to back up a little bit and say that there were specific objects that were being worked on with Persimmon and Shara on Hornby. And then those objects were delivered to the gallery after they were, you know, reimagined, if you will, and mm -hmm. fixed and so forth. And then we received <clears throat> collections. This collection was approximately five boxes worth of found letters, letters being physical letters, of the alphabet that are used on marquees, on you know house fronts for house numbers, a, a whole variety of things. And we love these letters. They <laughs> they just they have they had such a presence to them. And so to describe what we're looking at. This is a corner of the gallery where the yellow wall meets the white wall. And it is a, a it's literally, it's a pile of all of these letters. Again, variety of sizes, everything from, I would say the biggest one was probably 12 inches, if not a little bigger, down to something that was probably smaller than an inch big. And 
we are looking at, that's just me tipping over a water jug on the floor. It's all good. Um, it's, this is, that's what we're physically looking at. A collection of physical letters that are somewhat randomly put in a corner. If it feels to me, and I, again, you can please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it almost feels to me like somebody took a box of letters, shook it up and dumped it in a corner. <laughs> Like, like no rhyme or reason. Like it just feels so sporadic in nature. Um, and I know you're going to tell me that it was carefully put together. I, I get that, but it just, that's the feeling. And I, and I, I can't, I, I, I think I see a G in there. Is the other one an M or am I just extrapolating that because of Jeff McMichael oh. being spelt with a there's, G and an M? There's, there's lots of G and, and M's in it. That one is not, but it is placed to make you think exactly that. We got to get away from the word random. Uh -huh. I'm hoping the persimmon might come up with a better word because random is not at all what any of this is. And I don't think it looks random. Um, but, you know, that's my uh, um, take on it. Sure. It would be, I'm sorry, Amy. I was just going to ask Sharon, could you talk about the installation of this? Because you really, you really, as we say, dove into this. Mm -hmm. um, I built, I built a sculpture. It took all day. Um, <laughs> the, 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 what's in front is a numbers actually, um, not letters. Mm. Um, so they're silver numbers like that you would see on a house. Uh, they're approximately three and a half inches tall, maybe by two and a half wide. Silver, um, there's, there's piles of letters. There's a few um, semicolons. I don't know if anybody knows the, um, the semicolon reference to um, not committing suicide. There's a whole movement around the semicolon. No, can you unpack that? Um, I don't know if I can unpack it, but I can tell you what I know a little bit about it, which is um, it's a way of talking about just because you're feeling suicidal, you want to die, that that feeling doesn't have to be permanent. Mm. And so a movement came out of that. And um, I know several people who have a tattoo of a semicolon. It's a pause, right? Um, oh. So... And there was there were some of those. Um, there's there's GM all o was all over um, Jeff's house, so his his first initial and last initial, and there were many of those in there. So um, <clears throat> there those are they are sporadically wherever I could find them put in there. There's places where it kind of spells things almost, but GMs there's you know there's cues for queer. There's um, uh, yeah, just a bunch of, um, and yes, there is actually an M, but then there's another N. So there is on the on the floor there, that G, the large G is a large. So those, when we say large, let me just explain. So those silver, there's the silver numbers, and then there are letters that are as small as a half an inch and as large as about a foot, maybe even 18 inches. Um, the G and the N, which looks like an M, the way it's placed, um, is wood, and it's about three inches thick and about 18 inches high. Mm -hmm. There's a large, there's a, quite a lot of S's, and I really think he liked the S's because there's lots of S's, and I think the snake, again, I think the snakes, you know, referring to queer and referring to being, you know, evil or not fitting in and the, the, the connotations that come with that. Um, and, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, the many, many different colors. There's a big yellow flat E, um, there's some gold cues that are very, um, uh, smaller and kind of filigreed, like, um, like, uh, um, what is that Celtic, um, knot work. Oh yeah. There was about four boxes of letters. It's piled about three and a half feet high, maybe four feet high. Um, and this piece actually was bought. Um, and uh, he'll get a picture. So okay, I was going to just ask, because you talked about building a sculpture. And to me, that kind of implies that all these pieces are 
attached nope. to each other, but they're not. So, nope. okay. That's totally, inter <laughs> totally interesting to me. Well, um, I would just add to what Cher is saying in that, you know, the whole concept of, of, you know, the impermanence of it and the ever changingness of it is kind of the beauty of a sculpture that's made out of objects that you can put together in any way that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that happened with this is that it took many different forms. I mean, at one point, this collection of letters was a huge 10, 15, 12 foot island in the middle of the gallery. Yeah. And so, and, you know, it, it just continued to develop. Um, and I love the final product. It just, it, it, it makes so much sense to me as, as someone who was looking at all of that work. And, and Shara spent quite a bit of time with this piece. And do you think that whoever purchased this piece, when they get it home and assemble it, is going to find letters out in the world and add it to this collection? <laughs> who knows, maybe it'll inspire them to make it a bigger piece. Yeah. That's I Kind of seems like something I would I would do just thinking that oh I've got all these letters. That's a that's a funny question because Amy, um, my my friend who lives downstairs below me brought home some letters for me because they they saw this in the gallery <laughs> as we were building it. I did not add them, but I was quite tempted. You were tempted, and 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 uh, Yuri found a snake. Um, in one of his walks to the gallery and also did not add it, but was tempted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. you know, I think you, both, you you all have sort of hit this, this nail on the head, uh, which is now that you're out in this world, as you come across elements that you, I mean, even if you come across a flower tag, it's going to remind you of these installations, yes. which in theory is going to remind you of Jeff. And I think yes. that that's kind of the interesting thing as somebody who's observing this, even in a slideshow, but anybody who's got the opportunity to go into some gallery and observe it in person um, is not going to be able to erase that from their mind. And so I, 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 I think, I wonder, I hope that what it does is allow people to see the world a little differently. Um, and, and sometimes we, we just tend to think about this stuff as junk instead of um, you know, the beauty that it could be, or that it is, or that it can create or become. Um, and I know certainly for myself, you know, next time I see a, even if it's one of those little plastic letter magnets that you used to put on the fridge as a kid, right? I'm going to think about this piece um, because that's just what it does in my heart is, is, is pulls at my heart and pulls at my memory. And it's yeah. not a small piece. It, it, it looks like it's gigantic in scale, but then again, you know, the, the new owner of this piece, I suppose, could could put it in several installations in their home. Maybe. Well, it'll just have a new life. Yeah. We yeah. we did take some of the letters it, it, of the title. The title wall is some mm. of the letters. So his name is spelled out um, in the gallery with um, some of these letters. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Awesome. This is a really interesting piece. And, and thank you for sharing the information around the semicolon, because that's not something that I knew. And um, uh, those are the kinds of things that are, are often in art that um, those of us who can't see the art with our own eyes need to rely on the eyes of other people to point those things out to us. Um, so thank you for that, because that's a gift that I would have missed otherwise. So I appreciate that. Let's, um, let's take a look at Badlands. Mm. Who wants to take a crack at describing this one? I'll continue describing. Great, Yuri, I appreciate that. I think my cohorts want me to. <laughs> um, so this was a very interesting piece to put in the show. Um, basically, uh, I'll say first that this is an unfinished piece of Jeff's work. And so what we're seeing is um, or what's presented here is, again, we're on the yellow wall. There is a, what looks like a kind of a medicine cabinet, but it's, it's, it's a brown wood. It's got a frame on the front of it. And you look in, there's no glass. And you look inside and there's one shelf. And on the top of the front of the door of that, of the frame, there's a piece of moss, not moss, um, what's the word? Um, it's a- uh, Fungus. Fungus, thank you. A uh, piece of fungus that was growing off a tree that's put on the top. 
and that is hung on the wall. And then there's a big white pedestal in front of it with a collection of objects sitting on it. There is a 3D postcard of a duck flying through the air. There is a small wooden fish that has a bunch of holes drilled through it. There's a little oil can. There's a few random bones. There's a photograph. There are some coins and plastic cases. And there are two glass kind of vials filled with a variety of tiny, tiny little objects. Um, that's what we're literally being presented here. And this is an opportunity for people to experience Jeff's work completely before it was created. This was, I don't know if that sentence made sense, but this is almost what Persimmon was faced with at certain times is a piece that was, that had all the stuff together on what its intentions possibly were. But this is just an open possibility. And I will say that this piece also sold. Um, and so in, in speaking to the person who bought it, they knew Jeff. And one of the things that excites them the most about this is that they can continue to make a new piece of art with Jeff's art every day if they want. You can mm. change these things around in that piece any way that you want because you don't know what the original intention is. So there's nothing you can do wrong. Right. And so that, that's, what we're, well, that's what we have right here. I'm gonna go to SD because she's got a hand raised. So, so uh, official. <laughs> and it worked this time. And it time. worked. I just thought I would try it and see if it worked. Um, yeah, so this, this piece, um, it's actually called Badlands Unfinished. And uh -huh. what we wanted to do was because some of the pieces, not many of the pieces in this show were very finished. You've chosen, um, you know, a, a few that we really um, had to put together and persimmon predominantly put together, but we wanted to show how we found some of these pieces, the, the few pieces that we found like this, where this work was, um, it was all ready to make something. And, um, um, and so it's, that's why it's called Badlands Unfinished. And so we wanted to, you to be able to see this and, and to be able to then, you know, put, put that together in a way you wanted. It's also, um, this was from 2015, so the year he died. So he was curated into, I curated him, him into the 2015 festival. And this work was probably going to be in the festival. I'm just making an assumption on that. I don't actually know what happened is he had to pull out a couple of months before the show. And all I have from that is a description. Mm -hmm. And I kept the wall empty and I put the description of the work because um, he died uh, just a few days before the show opened. So we kept a memorial wall, put the description in the middle of the wall mm -hmm. and then had a video on the side. So just that, yeah, these pieces were collected very carefully um, and but then we're not um, did not see its um, its final phase, and it's just such a point, poignant um, work, and we really wanted to include it. I love that you chose this piece; it's it's one of my favorites. Well, that credit goes to Yuri because he curated the slides for our particular event this evening. So, because um, I know that there are many more works, and you know, if if, if time was uh, you know infinite, we would show them all, but. Uh, we had to choose some highlights and I just, I, I guess, um, you know, maybe I'll throw this to Persimmon next, but I, I, for me, I, I like, I don't know how to interpret this and maybe it's because I didn't know Jeff. So I'm wondering, you know, if there's anything we can extrapolate about what he was trying to say or what he was feeling or what he, you know, what do you think Persimmon, anything? Um. To me, um, I, I would say that J Jeff would have been trying to ev evoke people's feelings and memories in, in a really open way, but he would also have had his own, um, his own meanings in there. And to me, this is about 
his father um, because of the fish imagery and the the duck flying over a lake his father liked to fish and um there's there's kind of things that make me think of um like i don't know why that fungus <laughs> Maybe it's something that someone told me or something, but I think, oh yeah, this is this is about his father, but I think for him he his intention wouldn't be to make people think about his father. His right. intention would be to bring together these disparate objects and um and bring out whatever images and memories and thoughts those objects had for the viewer. Mm -hmm. So well, very well described, Prashivan. These, um, there's these two images that Yuri described as, um, <clears throat> I guess, a kind of sort of like an oblong glass container that's filled with some small objects in it. And I, you know, when I get in close and I use my magnifier with that, to me, they're like, they're like long, skinny, narrow snow globes. You know, I, I, I recognize it doesn't have, you know, liquid and stuff in it and stuff's not moving around, but it's got a collection of tiny objects in this glass um, cylinder as opposed to a glass dome. But it's almost reminiscent yep. to me of a slow, snow globe. And I wonder if, if one of you might just tell me an idea of what's inside these glass, you know, uh, cylinders. I can quickly say that there was everything from, you know, uh, uh, army chains, they're called with a dog tag. Dog but tags, that, yeah. Like a chain, there's some of that in there. There were little metal screws in there. There were some ball bearings. If I recall correctly, it was mostly metal stuff in there. And I, yeah. I'd like to also say that another way that we were able to share Jeff's idea of collections and adorning things is at the foot of the pedestal, this white pedestal that's holding these objects, we found a bag of, of metals, metals being that you would pin on your clothing. And we lined the entire base of the pedestal with those metals. You know, it's not, it's just part, we did that in different areas. We, we adorned things with some found stuff of Jeff's Are you talking like lapel pins? They're medals. I don't know how to say medals. it. They were is like it? military medals. Thank almost. you. Almost. Oh. Were, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, shape wise, that's what they were like. So we would we wrapped, you know, the edge to edge all the way around the pedestal. Those are on the floor. Um, that's pretty know, on, significant. On other objects, um, you know, on other pieces of sculpture around the bottom, we would put, you know, a collection of found red little flowers or white flowers that he had bags of. Uh, little things like that we try to display throughout um, the show as well. You know, I have to tell you that this is, um, you know, the more I listen to your eyes telling me what's in this piece, um, it actually reminds me of my own grandfather when I think about the fishing, but I also think about like my grandfather used to, we, we used to lovingly call him a hoarder. He was not a hoarder, um, but he was a collector. Um, and he would have uh, in his garage, for example, he had uh, mason jars and one would be full of bits of string and one would be full of screws, but they were all the same screw and one would be full of washers, but they were all the same. Um, and so there's like this, literally this connect, this collection of nuts and bolts um and my grandfather was also in world war ii and so when i hear you talk about what what's symbolic of possibly war medals mm -hmm. um i i get a very paternal feeling from this and i'm trying not to be gender specific but that for me it it, it is very reminiscent of something that my grandfather would have collected mm -hmm. um so so i appreciate that again it's all it's all about what your eyes sh see and what they share with me and how that invokes my ex you know my experience of the piece so i appreciate that greatly i think there's also a um, bullet casing interesting yes mm -hmm. there's a bullet casing in there okay interesting and so and that's what very much as person was was saying amy is that we're you know art i think good art 
is both beautiful and sometimes can be a bit mysterious and it is supposed to evoke something so that is exactly what you know i think he's trying to say he's not trying to point us in some very specific direction but it is evocative of that and you feel yeah. um, you know a familial a, a per, per, you know paternal um um connection it's the it's the, it's the blindness in me that that searches for the what are they trying to say like what's the story because otherwise you know it yeah. could be it could be a, a series of it's a, a wooden box with a this and a that and and unless you have somebody who like you just shared about the letters and the comma that is telling me some kind of sort of insider story piece that I can connect with, then otherwise it's really a very random series of objects. And so again, that's why I sort of default to this whole, well, what do you think that they're trying to say? Mm -hmm. uh, so again, and, and maybe it's not what the artist is trying to say, but maybe it's what, like what it invokes for you all that I can take a piece of and go, oh yeah, that's, you know, like you notice the bullet casing and you notice the this and the that. And, um, and that really has a, a very reflective way on how people with blindness or partial sight interpret this kind of artwork. Well, I think that's yeah. exactly what an artist wants you to be doing is ask what the story is. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that is exactly, that's, it's beautiful that you say that, Amy. It's, that's I think what artists want is for you to say what is this story mm -hmm. and then you know piece that together I appreciate that let's let's figure out what the story is for the next piece which is called so many recipes hmm. uh, I want to say starting with the, on this is that this is part of the same series as the boxes we saw before, but this one was completely assembled. So ah. we didn't have to guess what went where. It was completely assembled. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what a gift that must have been. Um, so Yuri, I guess you're gonna you're gonna describe this one for us. Um I will. So <laughs> sorry. Um, so this piece um, I believe is called My Mother's Recipes. Uh, is that correct, Persimmon? Um, so many recipes. So many so recipes. Time. So many recipes. So little time. Um, this is a. Okay, so in the uh, this is a pedestal. Um, the on the pedestal is a copper recipe box, an old style recipe box, that is filled with um, recipes from Jeff's mom. Um, real. Her, her recipe cards, um, all mostly in her handwriting. To the right of that on this pedestal, there is one or two cards sitting out with a pile of dried rose petals on top of it. Behind that, there is a box that's painted teal color that has a copper plate across the front. Persimmon, do you by chance know what that copper plate says? So many recipes. Thank you. So it says so many recipes in there. In the box is standing uh, or is being held off the pedestal by a three-legged kind of industrial looking metal foot thing. How's that for a description? A foot thing. Um, yeah, it's like a like like the base of a table. Yeah, and it's smaller. right in the center of it. So it's the only foot, if you will, holding that piece up. Inside of the box itself, there is a picture of Jeff's mom um, sitting definitely outside with sunglasses on, with shorts on, short sleeves, beautiful day. Behind that, and this is a cut out picture of her. And then behind that, there is a photograph of mountains with beautiful fall colored trees, foliage. And then between that photo and the photo of her are three very old kitchen utensils, um, you know, like sieves and mixers. There's three of them. And the wall behind all of this is yellow. Mm -hmm. Persimmon, do you want to add to that? Because I feel like you have stuff to say about this piece. Um, do you think he made those, um, those utensils? 
I don't because think I so. don't think they're actual utensils. You know, the one on the center one is the one that makes me think not, but I, I'm not sure. They're very um, crude, if you will, simply made um, what they are. But I don't know, Persimmon. They kind of remind me of the, um, the utensils that you take camping with you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you would put a piece of toast in between like these two metal mm -hmm. folds and you put it over the stove, the campfire, yeah. the, the, the fire, and it would, you know, toast your bread for you kind yeah. of thing so you're right they're they're very sort of rudimentary and very um you know like they're like somebody's made them out of wire mm. i actually mm -hmm. didn't know they were utensils i thought they were tennis rackets well i think that is one of the things is <laughs> that they are both utensils and um tennis rackets yeah. because um they're kind of representing two things that his mom really liked cooking and playing tennis. Mm. So, you know, you're, you're completely getting the ambiguity there. I'm wondering, and you know, this is kind of a random tangent, but you know, at the top of this experience, you know, we shared that Jeff was a wheelchair user and I, uh, that he had some assistance in, in some of these pieces with assembling them, that he would tell people what he want, like how they wanted to be assembled. And some of them are quite complex. And I wonder if any of you have any insight on how that process worked when he would, you know, give somebody directions on how he wanted things to be put together or attached or, you know. Maybe we could talk about that with the Griffin piece. Because sure. Actually okay, we'll come back to that then talk to the guy who worked on it with him. Awesome. Thanks, Persimmon. We'll come back to that. Um, I imagine that because this is a recipe box, this piece is probably sold. <laughs> Just on virtue of the recipes. This was one of the few pieces that was not for sale. Ah. Certain family members kept certain pieces. Okay. Okay. Because I can imagine uh, when my grandmother left behind a box of recipes, it was like the one thing all the, the kids and then the grandkids were fighting over. So of course. yeah. Um, yeah. Then it became the task for one person in the family to decode grandma's messy handwriting and, and put it into, you know, a Word document <laughs> so we could all have access. But as I'm sure anybody who's had a, an aged parent or a grandparent, the cooking that comes from, from that level of like knowledge and expertise and love is not necessarily measured. And so yeah. if it was one cup of flour, it was never really one cup of flour. It was just, yeah, this much flour. <laughs> So, um, and I actually yeah. need pure measurements to be able to make something. So we've got a hand from Anthony. Anthony, you want to ask a question? Just give Anthony a second to unmute himself. I got in a little late. So if, if this is correct, great. If not, correct me. This gentleman, Jeff, was originally from Toronto, I think at one point. If it's the same gentleman I'm thinking it is. Um. um I'm just like, it seems like um, I could be wrong, but where are your galleries? One sounds like it's in Toronto and the other one could be in BC. I'm just trying to piece together how he went all the way from, if he was in Toronto, all the way from there to BC. For Simon, is it correct that he showed a body at, at Tangled? Yeah, he, he wasn't from Toronto. He was from, um, what's it? Edmonton. Um, anyway, Alberta and um, and but he lived in BC for a long time, but he did have a show at a gallery in Toronto um, a few years before his death. So your galleries are both in BC then I'm gathering. Like I said, I got in a little late because Zoom was acting silly. So yeah, the Sum Gallery where this is uh, exhibited right now is in Vancouver. Oh, right on. Okay, yeah. I'll check out the website at some point. Don't know how much I can snag from it being totally blind. Screen readers don't read pictures, but we'll go check it out anyway. <laughs> Thanks, oh, Anthony. I've got to try and mute myself now. Let's see if we can do that. Can I just say about, I know Persimmon's going to talk more, but you had a question about how it was put together. Mm-hmm. Um, Persimmon talks eloquently about this in the essay, but 
there's a long history of artists working where it's the artist's idea and it's a worker's hands. Yes. And, um, that was, that's how I think of uh, much of his work. And like I said, Persimmon will go more into that with the Griffin, but. I, I appreciate that. And um, it's something, you know, if I'm not giving too much away that I, I'm interested in experiencing myself in a project I have in my own little head going around, but there are things that I know that I can't do. Um, uh, and I would need expertise from another artist or somebody to, to, you know, to help with. So I'm curious about that process personally and professionally. Um, you need minions to, <laughs> to make your vision manifest. Minions, and it sounds like you need money too. Well, so. yeah, that helps. <laughs> or a patron. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Can you feed people with pizza and beer these days? Like you could in the old days when you moved? Yes. You know? Yes, I love it. <laughs> um, let's uh, take a look at the next piece, which is called The Light is Implied. Persimmon, could I ask you to describe this piece? Okay. Um, this piece is a small sculpture, abstract sculpture that's mostly made out of wire. Um, it has a base that's a piece of wood with a piece of um, textured tin stuck on top of it, but that's just like the base that holds it up. The actual piece, um, the bottom of the piece is a light bulb where the, um, the glass is broken, but the, the inner kind of like filament and bits of it are still there and then there's wire that comes up in mainly two thin pieces of wire that are fairly straight but not absolutely straight and um about a quarter of the way from the bottom and a quarter of the way from the top there are um thin silver strips of metal that are holding those two parts together. And um, the whole thing is maybe about eight inches tall. And then at the very top, there's a spring that kind of comes off at an angle from um, where the two long wires come together. So overall, it's it's very kind of light and made of wire. And there's little odd bits of like wire sticking up here and there and bits of wire like wrapped around each other. And, and it's very open. And then the end just has this funny little tilt to it. I think, you know, what resonates with the way you describe this persimmon for me is that it's just like like the innards of a light bulb if you were to take the glass away. You know, it's yeah. very reminiscent of that kind of industrial feeling of what's on the inside of a light bulb. And the light is implied. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm surprised to hear that it's only about eight inches tall because it seems much larger in scale. And I guess that's, you know, what happens when you take photos of things is that you, you just can't tell the scale of things. But... Um, it seems much larger than that. Yeah, is eight inches right, you guys, do you think? Maybe a little bit taller, but it's it's about that size, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 10 maybe. Yeah, and this piece is sitting on a, on a shelf sticking out of the wall. But it's the kind of piece that's very transferable, it seems like it, you know, it's, it's, it's a sculpture, so it's already sort of assembled and how it's supposed to be, and you could take it and put it on a shelf or a mantle or or someplace in your home. Yes, these yeah. are completed objects, yeah. if you will. This one came to me, it just needed to have the um, the base reinforced. It was, it was entirely made. This one also to me is really very interesting. Um, and again, I think uh, for me, it's just because I, I somehow seem to have quite a few electricians in my family. And so it, it just, I don't know, it seems reminiscent of, of 
um, people that I know in my family, but also people that um, I guess like to use their hands, you know, people who are tinkerers, um, the, just they like they like to tinker. And so I, I get this real interesting feeling about um, the world of, of assembling things that you can tinker and take apart. And um, I, I really like this piece. It really, it really, it really gravitates to me. Um, so I might have to check and see if it's available. You just never know. It's not. Oh, of course it's not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Of course it's not. Of course it's not. Um, do you at all know if there's any sort of larger story behind this piece as it was already finished when you found it? I don't know. No. no. But I love the way you um, you bring your story to it because I think that's exactly where he would want this to go is like it has his own story to it and you might not know what his story is but it sparks a story in you and mm. so that becomes that becomes just as valid a story as whatever his story was so i love that persimmon does it does it invoke something specific for you this piece yeah um i just love the lightness of it um and i love the way the like springs are a big thing in jeff's work um similar to snakes and s's and um any kind of like spiraling thing and the way the spiral kind of goes off at a crooked angle um it just has this lovely life to it and it's mm. all kind of it's not very strong it's it it looks like it could be just easily crushed but it has, has this life to it so to me um i guess i relate it to disability in that you know sometimes mm -hmm. we can have broken bones we can have spinal cords that are severed um and still have this strength and light and life um it's just our own our own style i love that yuri how about you anything in particular that gravitates for you about this piece not particularly i'm worried that we're going to run out of time i want to make sure oh, we see everything. don't you worry i'm keeping track okay good good good, good. sd how about yourself i think st's on a break at this one moment oh all right then we'll let sd enjoy her break and we'll take a look at double helix which is the next slide so i'll describe this um it's Visually, it's a relatively simple piece to look. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, nothing is simple to look at. Um, this is two industrial beaters, um, and they are cylindrical, um, silver, stainless, approximately a foot and a half, two feet tall each. Dines. Sorry, Yuri, when you say beaters, are you talking like, like a cooking utensil beater or? An industrial, I think, I would assume they're cooking beaters, but right, they're so definitely an industrial mixing object of some kind. Right, okay. So something you'd find in a bakery or a factory. In a factory, I'm going to go with. Yeah. Um, it's two of them. Um, they are stainless steel, very heavy, um, about a foot and a half to two feet tall, about three or four inches in diameter. Um, they are mounted to a piece of plywood um, on the wall at an equal height. And then each one of them has a piece of copper pipe that's about a half an inch wide and about six feet long running through the center of each one. And they are, um, but those two pieces of copper pipe are not lined up. So they're ajar from each other. One's higher than the other one on the left. Mm -hmm. And that is the object. 
I have discovered that I really like this cool industrial look. Mm -hmm. um, there's something really very interesting to me about this. Um, and I, uh, Persimmon, have you got any thoughts about this particular piece? Again, I imagine this is a piece that is sold already. That's, you know, it's sold very quickly. Um, I don't know, Yuri, do you know if it was sold? I don't know. And I will say for our audience, you will get an email afterwards with the Sun Gallery website and you'll be able to go there and hopefully be able to uh, get the information needed on the sizes and the, what's for sale and so forth. Well, one thing I would say about it is that um, there's another spiral in it. The um, both beaters, they have, um, they have long straight, two or three long straight um, bars that make up each side and then plates at the top and the bottom and then running around the bars there's this um there's this spiral of metal and so it ties in with Jeff's interest in spirals and snakes mm -hmm. and these copper bars are sort of uh sliding through the center of these these beater cylinders so it's almost like if you were to slide a long stick through a toilet paper tube mm. right um although you can see through all these angles because the beaters are made of wire and you can see through them so you can see the copper wire through them but they're tube shaped um and then affixed to the wall mm -hmm. um with the with the pipes being at uh different different angles so they're not sort of they're not equally running uh, vertically parallel, but they're kind of off a little bit, which is, you know, the, the, asymmet the asymmetry of it is what's, what's kind of interesting, mm -hmm. I think. I would just, I wanted to say that what a piece like this is another example of how Jeff is able to reclaim a found, found materials and put them together in a way that resembles something so elegant and so simple Yet at the same time, you can spend time with this piece and, it, and it, it gives you so much information and makes you think about so many things from abilities to reuse, to, to movement, to taking off. All of these things for me are encompassed mm -hmm. in this piece. Yeah, very cool. There's also, for, for some reason, I feel like the sturdiness of the pipe is like the strength, but the open and airiness of the beater is like I don't want to use the word weakness, but it's like there's this juxtaposition between really, really strong and sort of vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, which I, for me, like I interpret it that way. And I think that that's kind of an interesting um, look to. Vulnerability yeah, really is a good ad adjective to use for this. Yeah. 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 Also, when I look at those beaters, they also kind of remind me of old fashioned leg braces. Yeah. Um, mm. And just the beauty of the material, the so silver soft um, stainless steel and the, the beautiful copper pipe together. It just, there is that sturdiness and there is that strength. Um, so I can read it really well as a um, juxtaposing disability with strength in order to um, deny the stereotypes of being weak or being broken or being yeah. useless. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the next one, which is Vortex of Everything. And we're just one more away from finishing, folks. So I'll describe this for you. It is a it's a, it's a collection of four objects, four sculptures. Um, to the left, we have um, a, I believe they call it a, a food sieve, mm -hmm. or a food ricer, um, which is a, a vintage old uh, silver object, tin probably, that has three sides, uh, three bars, a handle, a circular piece at the bottom that holds the three legs together, and then a big V-shaped cone 
that's full of holes and that would be the sieve part. And inside of that sieve, it is full of broken pieces of stick, feathers, pieces of wire. A few pieces of wire have circles at the top of them, but I would say a few branches and it's all very weathered looking objects with, that are held within that one piece. Mm -hmm. The piece next to it is a light bulb that has wire around it, holding it to a wooden base. The light bulb has a hole drilled through the base of the light bulb, which is inverted. So the base is facing upward and it has a wick that you would light um, <laughs> On, oh, that, interesting. on that piece. The piece next to that, I'm going to say that it is a, like a cheese shaker or a, it's a shaker of some kind. Again, it's vintage, probably tin. And it, it's, um, you know, you shake sugar out of it, cheese, grated cheese maybe. But in all of those holes, there are crow's feathers shoved into all of those holes. So you have the silver object um, with a handle with all of those black feathers coming out of the top. Mm -hmm. And the piece to the right of that, the fourth one, I believe this is called spring salad. And this is a spring, um, a large heavy spring about six inches tall. It has a, a, a sieve and holding a sieve on top of it. And then in inside of that, very, very fine shavings, metal shavings that almost look like springs. And those are the four objects directly. And are they all roughly the same scale? Well, looking, um, having them next to each other the way they are gives you an idea of the scale. And so I'll say that the largest piece on the left with the objects in it is probably about two feet tall and the smallest object next to it, probably about six inches tall, mm -hmm. if that's helpful. Okay. Yeah, again, you know, I, I'm going to point it out before Persimmon even does. The springs, the reference of the springs mm -hmm. that, we, um, that we see throughout his pieces, the reference of the feathers that we've seen throughout his pieces, and I know are in some of the other pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, you know, the, the metal bits uh, that keep appearing over and over and over again. Um, it's kind of interesting. One of the things I really liked about the spring salad piece in particular is similar to the piece we looked at prior. It's a very simple compilation of objects put together to represent something really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he and a lot of the objects that Jeff's found to put together, as I said before, they're not the pretty found objects all the time. You know, the spring salad is really just a pile of junk put together in the most elegant way mm -hmm. to represent exactly what the artist wanted to represent. And the, this, this balance that Jeff had with, again, I'm reiterating, but found materials that have a lot of history visually, physically, he, he had the ability to incorporate all of those things to tell whatever his story was in that moment of that piece. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a real gift because I think if you break, uh, like you're saying here, you break any of these things down to like the single element, mm. you look at it like a pile of junk, right? Mm -hmm. a, a single spring, a pile of whatever. But when you start to assemble them in these little collections of found objects, they start to speak to you in a whole different way. Um, and anybody can do that. I mean, that is the gift of this artist that we're talking about. I don't about. know that anybody can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said that anybody cannot do that. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I, I think that that's a real challenge and a real gift. Well, it so, is. I mean, yeah. and, and we are, we're having examples of those in front of us. Is, is that incredible balance uh, that the artist had to create these objects to be as beautiful and as simple as they are created out of the simplest objects? Yeah. Well, we're going to head on to the, um, this is a, a, a slide from the exhibit with the Griffin. Um, and these are the last couple of slides. So this is this is the sum gallery as I understand it. So Yuri, maybe just give us kind of an overview of, um, so these are all of the pieces in the collection in the gallery. This is the majority of them. This is half the gallery. Um, and 
from your, I'll generally describe the space. You can, uh, the wall on the left is yellow. And that was the wall that we refer to as the altar wall. Mm -hmm. um, there are the Badlands pieces there. The, the piece with his parents is in the center of the wall. To the right of that wall is the white wall. Um, installed there is the row of snakes, the flower tag piece, the beaters we just saw. In the center of the room, um, there are sculptures. And I, I just want to say to everybody, um, one of the reasons that we, I, I personally chose not to put the sculptures in our slideshow is because for the catalog, we had to darken out the backs of them. And um, for this purpose, you, they, you really would not get any visual information off of them. It would have been too difficult. Yeah, for, the, our, for our friends with some partial, the contrast just wasn't. It uh, just wasn't there. So yeah, that wasn't was there. a big reason for that. But in the center of the gallery, there are three large pieces of found object sculpture that go across. And not in the photo, to the left of this, is the objects that we were just looking at on the wall. And then behind us in this photo is a wall of uh, Shara Esty Holman's photographs mm -hmm. um, of Jeff's home, which we'll talk about briefly. Yeah, we're gonna, I think we're gonna go right to those because I know that we wanna get to this Griffin piece and give it the time that it deserves. So let's take a look at, uh, these are the last two we've got. So this is the Griffin in Jeff's home. So this is a photo of Jeff's home you are already, and I know you're going to describe this, but you already get kind of this this eclectic feel from being in his space. But I'm wondering, is Cher, are you with us? Yep, I'm here. Cher, we're at the last two photographs. We're we're looking at um, your. Yeah, I can see them. I'm wondering, can you describe them for us? Because you were in that space, I think you'd have a better way of describing it. And maybe, if possible, um, tell us the context of us having these photographs in the exhibition. You know, Yuri, you're doing a great descriptive job. I think you should just do it and then I can add on. I can play that game. I'm not, I'm not gonna let you off the hook. It's mm. okay, I, I, I'm okay being hooked you're, up. You're doing a beautiful job. Well, that's, thank you. Um, so I, I want to say that this image is from a collection of, am I correct, 14, Shara? Um, 18. 18, but the 18, I forgot, sorry. Is the 18, which is the number of life in um, Judaism. Yes, 18. we have this 18 it's, an, it's, a, it's a magic number, it's also numerology, it comes down to a nine. So yes, 18, but actually uh, 17 in the gallery, but there's 18 total, but they didn't quite fit in, our sp in the space. So part, this is one of two photographs we're gonna show you this evening, which were taken by Esty Holman, who did a residency, if you will, in Jeff's apartment after he passed away. I'm gonna let Shara say a little bit about that, but this photograph that we are looking at um, is a shot of inside Jeff's house that kind of shows a bit how objects and his life all came together. Um, he, his, his life was an installation. Art was around him everywhere. His life was art, his, his house was art. And an ever-changing installation was his house. And this is, this is a photograph, one photograph of that. And the best way for me to describe this, it's kind of a, there's a lot going on. So I'll say in the background of the photograph, there's strings of white lights, there's bookcases, there's a table that has lots of boxes, a globe on it. You see a white pillar that has some silver framed mirrors. Next to that is a big dresser mirror. And then in the foreground is the majority of a piece called, um, what was it? It's, it's uh, assistant, what's the title, Shara? Um, service Griffin. Service, service Griffin. Griffin. Service Griffin. And that is one of the sculptures that is in the exhibition. Um, and I'm, I, I want to say 
that we decided to include a, a series of Cher's photos in this because it was another way, you know, this, this, this exhibition is all about conversations of, with art, people that are here and not here within the art. This was an opportunity to share a series of images from Shara's experience of being submerged in that space. So but before you get too deep into that, Yuri, can you describe to us what this griffin looks like? So this griffin is only partial in this photograph. The griffin is probably about four feet tall. It is made out of found driftwood primarily. And one of the legs, which is not visible in this photograph, is a beautiful banister rail with a claw foot holding a big piece of clear glass, a glass ball. It's very, very elegant. That's the griffin itself. I, I don't, I, I, the, the, naive, the, the naivete in me would say, I don't really know what a griffin is, because um, to me, it looks like a giant eagle. So a griffin is, I can't remember, I believe it was a cross persimmon. Do you remember? Is it a lion and... Um... A lion, an eagle, and a woman. That's what it is. So these are things that Jeff had, he had them in his house, little sculptures in various places, which does show up in some of the, one of the photographs we had on the exhibition. Um, Persimmon, do you want to add to what I'm trying to say? <laughs> well, basically, a griffin is a mythological creature, mm. and he's um, he's made this <coughs> beautiful, Oops. beautiful griffin out of all like intricately combined pieces of driftwood and found objects that just. Um, they kind of show this animal in its delicateness with its spread wings and um and like i was going to say it was he collected all the pieces for it he knew exactly which piece of driftwood went where and he basically you know sat with um, Calvin Cairns, a carpenter, and said, okay, I want this piece here, I want this piece there, use a little brass nail here, use a screw here, and mm. um, just instructed him how to put it together very exactly. Calvin said he had no input in it except for maybe saying oh let's use an inch and a half screw here it'll be stronger very very interesting and and do, does somebody know what the mythology around the griffin is what the what, what the griffin meant i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to google it afterwards if nobody knows the answer to that because i'm googling ah you're googling stand by <laughs> yuri's googling um it's a I, I don't I don't know what the mythology, but Yuri's going to find that. But the um, the like so many of the the names of the works I think are so evocative, and you know some people have service dogs or service cats or emotional support animals, and Jeff, uh, you know Jeff wanted a service griffin, which is so magical and so him and so Jeffly. So Jeffly, yes. there's the theme, right, Jeffly. Um, SD, do you want to do you want to talk a bit about being in Jeff's space um, before we go on to the last photo? What that was uh, like for you? Sure. Um, I'll, I, I know this is long. I'll try. I'll try and be short. Um, I was asked to go and photograph uh, um, Persimmon. I think was the advocate in in that um, in that I I I do work around death and loss. Um, my wife died. Um, and <clears throat> even before that was doing um, work around that. Um, and um, so pretty fresh actually from that grief, Jeff mm. died. And so 20 days after he died, um, 
Persimmon and I went there and I spent four days in his house, in his bed, by myself with his ghost. Wow. And um, photographed the space. And what, the, what I think would be really just, um, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, he lived in a, you know, kind of a little, you know, bit of a hovel of a basement suite that was magnificent when you walked inside. Like the way he, um, you know, the way, the, the, the way he curated his life and um, one of the one of the things, and I think why the photographs, why they wanted the photographs um, included, I was a little bit against it at first, but um, I think it was good in the end. Was um, I think of Jeff as someone that um, that is very. Uh, it's like the Oscar Wilde quote that he says, um, "I put only my talent into my work. I put my genius into my life." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that very much suits um, Jeff and the way he lived in his, um, you know, in, in, in his uh, really art home gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it almost seems like it should have been its own gallery space, you know, memorialized just the way it was left. But we, we can't all have that dream. Yeah, my vision was when I when I was against the pictures, I was like, okay, what I would really like is three spaces. One that was the sculptural work that we mostly looked at tonight. One would be the photographs, and one would be his performance work, mm -hmm. like just video installations. That would be ideal if we lived in a in a perfect world where we had enough money to do that. Yeah, yeah. This really is just such a small piece of Jeff's life we're offering. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Um, he, he seems to be to be, be a very complex, very creative individual. And um, I, I can only imagine what it's like, like to, to feel the essence of him in his own space. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that's quite empowering. Do you have any Google results for us there, Yuri? Oh, I was going to say the physical, it only gives me a physical description of a griffin. And I'm just going to say it is a legendary creature with the body, tail and back legs of a lion the head and wings of an eagle, and sometimes an eagle's talons on its front feet. Okay. So that's the physical description. I don't have any mythological stories yet. All right. Well, I think we can send out some links post tour if people want to explore that's that. Homework. Let's get homework. Yeah, that's all right. Let's go on to the last image of the slideshow. And, um, you know, Yuri, you advocated pretty hard for this to be the final image. Tell us what this is we're looking at. Well, I advocated that for that because it's the final image in the catalog. It's, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it shows his home. Oh, you can see the wallpaper on the wall, the back. Um, sorry, didn't mean it to say it that way. But in this image, there is uh, an area which was the altar image that has the wallpaper where the yellow came from for the wall right. that we chose. Yeah. Um, this, this image shows a lot of his work in his home. It really shows the color of his home, which is so vibrant in every way. Again, you guys were all talking about a lot of greens and oranges and that kind of stuff. Green really sticks out in this photo. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's his chair left empty, you know? I mean, it's kind of cliche, you know, but it's, it, it's, um, I think it's still a perfect image to end with, you know? I mean, in this, in this image, we get to see all of Jeff's objects around him without him. And yeah. just, just a machine that he used as he used anything else around him in that room. And, and again, for context, this is his custom made power chair. This is not an armchair or a rocking chair. Yes, thank um, you. It's a, it's, it's his, it was his access item. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, but he's it's not a, in it. I think it's a somber image. I think it's a joyous image. It's a beautiful image. There's so many little areas to focus on, but generally speaking, it seems a perfect way to end. Yeah. Oh, it feels it feels heavy, and I kind of got a little goosebumpy. Good, um, because after going through this process with y'all, I feel like I feel like I kind of know Jeff, and I uh, I feel like I have a 
um, you know, a kinship to him and, and I'm going to be looking at things in my world differently, especially things that I interpret as being junk um, and, and what that, what, what it could be as something else. So I appreciate that. Um, that's the end of the slideshow. So, uh, you know, I know we'll have you, you all for a few more minutes because um, we wanted to just share people with what's happening with the Sum Gallery in terms of these pieces that are available for sale. As we know, some of them are sold and some of them are available. Um, Yuri, you were telling me about how, how these pieces were priced. Can you share with us how that works? Very briefly, um, we because when an artist passes away and they're not Picasso, we don't have places for work to go. Mm -hmm. um, so collectively and with family members, we decided that we really want to find homes for all of the work. And so there are pieces in the exhibition that are not for sale that go to family. And the majority of the work is for sale. The way we priced it was, is we, we kind of gave it a, a, a market value, a current market value based on the artist and their history and so forth. And then we came up with a range of what you can pay for it. So let's just say uh, an object has a value of $1,000. We put a price range on it from 50 to $500. So you can literally come in and choose to pay $50 for that item, or you can pay $500 for that item. We leave it up to you. Right. And so all of the proceeds from the exhibition, um, from the work that is that sells, will be split between the Sum Gallery, which is a registered charity nonprofit that always needs support, as well as it'll be split with Kickstart Disability Arts and Culture. And when I was the artistic director there, I started the Jeff McMurchie Artist Development Grant, and that's where the proceeds will go towards. And the Artist Development Grant is given out once a year um, through Kickstart, and the applications were just put out. So, um, so follow Kickstart, go to their website, and Amy will share that information with you. Um, but annually they give uh, a grant um, and the value changes every year. And, but basically it is a check of a certain amount of money. I believe last year it was $1,000 as well as 500 postcards uh, marketing your artwork, um, business cards that are brailled for you as well as a two hour consultation with somebody who works in your field. So it's a really great opportunity it continues to foster Jeff's legacy um, in how he worked in to help people, forwarding the concept of disability arts and culture. And it's something that um, I think Kickstart's really proud of to be able to keep having going on. Right, right. And I think about some of the people I know in this space who are, who are artists in their own right and um, might be interested in checking out uh, this uh, Jeff McMurchie grant. I, I might check it out myself. I would um, I wouldn't not. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really great opportunity. Yeah. Um I it seems like a really great opportunity and and I um I love this idea of you know we've lost Jeff but we are finding ways of memorializing him um through this grant that I hope will supersede us all, you know. Um as long as kickstarts around. Yep. Let's hope there's a grant available. And SD wanted to share about a catalog that's available through some gallery. Um, so we'll let SD to do that as well because there's a there's a photo catalog available. If SD is with us. There he is. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you right now. Can you hear me? We yeah. Can. Um, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Rick, if you want to hang on, SD, hang on. I don't, I'm not going to be able to show it to you. Yeah. Is that because of the screen share? Yeah, I'm with you right now. I'm actually in transit. I had to leave the gallery, so oh, I'm on the phone. <laughs> that's why. Okay. Yeah, no, don't oh, risk your life. Don't uh, risk your life. Uh, but maybe, maybe you can. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work in the dark. Uh, maybe you can just describe to us what it is. Oh, okay. So and you will be able to see it. So the, the show ends on the 23rd. Um, if anybody um, wants to come down, we have appointment slots. Pe um, people can book a half an hour appointment all to themselves in the gallery um, or in their core bubble. And we will have, uh, we will have the, ga the, the, the catalog available so catalog it's um i think it's eight 
eight by, oh geez, eight by seven, a uh, beautiful catalog with all of the pictures and essays um, by Yuri, by Persimmon, by myself, by um, Paula Jardine, um, David Roach, and I think that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, it's just beautiful. Um, so, um, and the, the, you will also be able to get a free downloadable version um, that goes up on the 23rd when it's available at the same time it's available in the gallery. So if you go to the website, I don't know if you'll be able to read that um, and you can get it there um, or you can purchase it. Um, the suggested price is $30, but we um, pretty much will take anything if you don't have any money because that's just the way we roll. And we'll make sure that our guests get these links and if they need support in finding, you know, how to use the website or something, then I will offer up my time to assist them with uh, making orders or anything that they may have difficulties with. So awesome. um, th thanks, SD, for sharing that. I appreciate it. And, and I'm I'm concerned that you're driving. So I think we should say good night to you, SD. <laughs> Hello. I am driving safe. I have a headset on. Okay. And um, I'm not, um, I'm completely hands free, driving very slow on back streets, and I'm home now, so no worries. All right. Yay. Um, I just want to open up the floor again to any of our guests who have, uh, or any of our uh, Vocali members who have questions of our, our three curator friends this evening. If you want to use the raise your hands func function to ask any questions about Jeff McMurchie or the exhibit or, um, pieces that you might be interested in or how to find out more information. We'll leave that open for a few minutes um, while I wait for the hands to pop up or not. Um, I do want to share with folks what's coming up next week, which is January the 27th. We're presenting a history of water in the Middle East. And this is an audio play uh, from the Royal Court in London. And it explores um, theater and poetry and music and humor and um, the impact that water has on the lives of women living across the region um, in the Middle East. So uh, same bat time, same bat channel. It'll be in your newsletters. Um, tell your friends to to sign up if they're interested. Um, let's look and see if we've got any hands while I've shared oh. that. Um, I do actually have a question. That's oh, Megan. yeah. Go ahead, Megan. Um, so where, so it's going to be at, uh, on January 23rd, is that right? January 23rd. Third is the last day of the uh, physical exhibition at some gallery. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be able to come down because of, you know, the, 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 the COVID. I wish I could. Yeah. But we can't be traveling. Anyway, so what, the, what, what disability did she actually have? Did, did, he, did Jeff actually have? Persimmon or Yuri, you want to answer that? He was quadriplegic. He had a diving accident when he was in his um, late teens. And oh. so, Did you say diving as in like in a swimming pool? Of um, a high pool? Well, it was in a lake, yeah, yeah but okay. like that. Mm. Was not, yeah. Hi. Mm. yeah, okay. I'm her, fr I'm her friend. Okay. I'm her soul sister. Okay. That was great. So awesome. Thanks, Megan, for joining us. Thank you. Any other questions from the group? Seeing none, I'll, 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 I'll you know, with the most thanks for you all for joining us. But before we let you go, Persimmon, I have you on my list for helping us with our draw tonight. Uh, oh yeah. Which is a $20 gift card to White Spot for Vocali members that live in BC. Uh, so I'm going to bring Donna out. And Donna and Persimmon are going to initiate this raffle. First raffle of the new year. All right, Persimmon, I've got my bag. I'm shaking up the names. And whenever you are ready, please say stop. Okay. Go, go, go. Stop. And the winner is Arlene. Arlene. Yeah. Yay, you're the proud winner of a $20 white spot gift card. We'll make sure we connect with you offline and get you that gift card. Uh, I think it's a physical card, so you'll probably get it in the mail. But uh, they don't expire, so you don't have to feel like... Oh, nice. Yeah, like it's a rush to, you know, during COVID. 
Um, but I actually have eaten in a white spot during COVID and it's pretty above above par. So that's nice to know. Um, thank you so much, Yuri. Thank you, Persimmon. Thank you, SD, for joining us this evening for our virtual vocal eye and sharing a little bit about Jeff's life and uh, creating conversation and a place for us to um, you know, just have a little art in our life because I'm missing being in, in, in physical spaces with people, but, um, but I really appreciate this format and what you all bring to it this evening. So thank you so much for sharing. Privilege. Thank you. It was great. Thank you, a Amy. It was quite a gift. This was lovely. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited you were all able to participate and who knows what partnerships we might have in the future. You just never know. Dot, dot, dot is all I'm going to say. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. And of Thank course, you, everybody. have a lovely evening. And, and for anybody who wants to just stick around and chat for another 15 minutes or so, we're going to just have open chat and do some community connection and everybody's welcome to participate. So, um, and I will just add, if anybody has any follow up questions or wants to get in touch with any of us, just ask Amy and I can speak for myself saying she can pass on my email website, anything lovely. if anybody wants yeah. to. That's lovely. We'll absolutely make sure people get, people will know how to find you all in some gallery. So, Great. Um, and, and hopefully people will be interested in purchasing some pieces. Cause I think, um, I think not only um, is it nice to have these, this kind of art in your, in your house, but it's nice to just explore it and put it up yourself and, and make it your own thing too. So we can all have a little Jeff in our lives. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you again, everybody. Bye. Good evening. Peace out. Peace out. Yeah, peace out. <laughs>